Hello everyone, welcome back to our My 2018 tutorial series on our Catapult project. In our last one, we went ahead and finished our winch. We're going to go ahead and take it to the next level now. So we're going to go ahead and finish this off. We're going to start on the catapult arm. So to finish this up, we need to combine down our pieces here um, and then mirror it over onto the other side. So we're just going to select everything here and deselect the pieces that we don't want. So these uh, brackets, the axle piece, we don't need to mirror that, um, or these screws here. Okay. And we have one more on this side I don't want. So it's just this end piece that I want to mirror. So now I'm going to group it. So I'll hit Control G. That will move the pivot point to the center. You can see here it's at the origin. I can hit Control D. And I am now going to move it through the X scaling of X. So minus one is the scale X. And now it has inverted it onto the other side. I'm not doing the naming stuff at the moment. The reason why I didn't name those groups is because I'm about to combine everything down into one object. So I'm going to select again. Let's just go ahead and select this guy. Press up on the arrow key. That'll give you the hierarchy. Now I have the axle and uh, both groups selected. And now I'm going to go to mesh and combine. So combine both objects down to one object. Okay, so. If I left it alone just as is, it would be kind of weird because the pivot point isn't actually on the center where I want it to be. Control Z there. What I want it to be is right on this vertex right here. So to move the pivot point, I'm just going to press D. I'll activate the pivot location or relocation feature. I'll press V and hold it down. And then middle mouse button on this little circle part right here, which allowed me to vertex snap the pivot point to this vertex, the one where it is all these triangles here converge. This was already snapped to the center of this, which makes it square. Now this will be a good pivot point. Okay, so I should be able to go ahead and press D to exit, and when I test it, it now spins freely. Now it's pretty good. Okay. So the winch is done. Now we're going to go ahead and proceed onto the catapult arm itself. So I'm going to create a cube, which is what I'm going to build my catapult arm out of, and R for scale. Scale this out where it's about the same length as my catapult, roughly. I'm going to allow for a little bit of leeway over here because there's also going to be a U shape that's going to make up the catapult uh, netting area. Okay, so from here I'm also going to scale it out in the X so it's a little bit thicker. Probably about right in there should be good. Want to be about thick enough to kind of fit between these two brackets. That should be pretty good though. Okay, so now I'm going to jump into my insert edge loop tool. I need a bit more geometry to be able to kind of create a slender neckline towards the top. What is it? Just a giant block going on here. So where it says multiple edge loops, make sure this is active. We're going to bump this up to 20. And I'm just going to drop them in. There we go. And I'm also going to switch this over to two because I want some geometry going along the length as well. So I'm just going to drop them in right here. And that's good as well. Okay. I'm going to exit out of my insert edge loop tool. I'm going to go to vertex mode now. I'm going to select this chunk of vertexes on the end. Actually, let's bring it back up to about right here. Okay. I'm going to turn on soft select. That'll allow me to scale uh, this section here, but have a fall off of influence that goes down the length of the catapult arm. So press B, give this fall off here. You hold down B and drag to the left, it'll give you this fall off ring to where you can uh, make it to where it's less or more dramatic of an effect the further away from the selected area. I'll bring it down to about right here. So the whole thing is in there, but it falls off quite dramatically towards the end. I'm going to activate my scale tool, and I'm going to scale in the x axis so that the neckline's a little bit more slender towards the end here. That's good. Okay, so I'm done with that bit. I'm going to be to exit out of soft select mode. I'm going to jump into component mode and go to my space component mode. Select these two end faces. I'm going to run my extrude tool because I want to eventually I'm going to have like this beam that's going to come through these uh, these brackets. And I want the that beam to come through um, the end of my, my catapult arm. Okay, so let's go ahead and run one more extrusion, extrusion. So I'll hit G, repeat last command again. And I'm going to scale these together. There we go. A little bit of a beveled end kind of look. Okay, so I'm going to also select these four faces here on this side. 
I also want these faces on the other side selected as well. And turn on soft select one more time. B. And this time I'm going to hit R for scale. And instead of scaling in the X to kind of that uh, thunder fall off going down the length, I'm going to actually move it in the Y because I want it to be thicker the closer you get to the base. Okay. Let's go, right? Okay. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now this is the part where it gets a little bit more interesting. How to create the end piece that's going to be the, the horseshoe looking bit that the netting is attached to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to select the three end faces. I'm going to press B to exit out of my soft select mode. Okay, there we go. I'm going to activate my extrude tool. I'm going to start out by scaling this up so that it's got a bit of a wider kind of block that I'm going to be using. Okay. I'm going to hit G. What this is going to look like is that the catapult arm kind of connects this big beam at the top here. Uh, and then there'll be some cross beams that's going to come out of this. Okay. So that should be good for now. I'm going to go ahead and select these two side faces. I'm going to hit extrude. And I'm going to be working mainly from one side. So since the locator is on this side, this is the side I'll be doing everything from, but whatever I do on this side will be appearing on this side, so it will be working symmetrically. Okay, hit G again, so now I'm just going to pull out this geometry like so. Okay, something like that's probably good. I'm going to hit G again. This time I'm going to uh, scale this up so that it's kind of like the same thing that's going on over here. Looks like this beam is coming out and then connecting with a larger corner piece. I'll press G again. This time I'm going to pull it out, so it's got this block on the end. Now I'm going to switch which faces we have going. Select these two again. So now that they'll be going this direction, I'll select the extrude again. Scale this down a bit. And then press G. And I'll just pull this geometry out. Okay. I'm going to press G again. This time it's just going to be um, same kind of deal, but I'm going to make it a little bit more fancy at the end. So I'm just going to do a series of extrusions to kind of Make it look a little bit more ominous at the end. Let's make this little spike kind of thing going out. So I'll go like this, and then I'll have this spiky thing that will just make it look kind of cool. Start out like that, and then just scale it down. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, so looking at this, you know, you can kind of see, okay, well, maybe I went a little bit overkill on this and a piece that's a little bit too big in comparison. It's not a big deal. All I have to do is just go to face mode, select to all these faces here. Hit R for scale, scale it up a little bit. Move it back. Okay, things are looking a little more balanced now. I'm a little more happy with that. Compared to the rest of the wagon though, I'll have to go ahead and scale the entire object down a bit. And that looks a little more realistic and satisfied with that. I'm going to go, on, go ahead and delete the history, clear this all out. Freeze transforms, I'm going to call this mesh catapult arm. Okay. Now we're going to texturing this. Okay. So I'm going to, again, just go to UV and automatic. Okay. I'm now going to attach in that texture that we've been using for everything else. Go to assign catapult texture Lambert. Good. And I'm going to go to my split panels, go to panels, panel, and UV editor. Okay, just select it here. Here's all my bits. It's going to be a little bit of a project here. So, this is going to be, probably take the most of the rest of the lesson is just texturing this thing correctly. Okay, so I'm going to start out with this one here. I'm just going to go ahead and spin this around, scale it down a little bit. See what that looks like. Looks good. Okay, moving on, grab the next one. And if your automatic UVs did not look right, if they look like squashed um, or stretched, um, you can always reproject or you can just manually scale them to look correct in the UV editor. So it's not a bad exercise to be able to go through and be able to adjust these by hand if necessary. 
function does most of the work for you, but if it's not looking the way that you think it should, don't let it be a roadblock, just muscle it in to make it look right. You know what they should be proportionally. They should match to what you see inside the 3D viewport. Okay, that looks good. Put on that side, put on the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna go to UV shell mode and just figure out which bits I'm missing on the bottom here. So select these guys, deselect basically all this here. And I just want these ones, these ones up here that are left. Okay. And let's see here, these guys. Let's go to move and sew. G, where these guys go to. Moving so, moving so. Yeah, there we go. Take all this and put it down here as well. That looks pretty good. Okay, moving along. Let's go ahead and grab the bits that I know that I want to be in a different texture. So I know that, or actually, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and just finish this texture. We're gonna go to UV shell mode. I'm gonna select this set here. This set here, this set here, and this set here. These are all going to be the same as the length of the arm here. So that's all these guys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab them all at the same time. If I want to, I can go through and just do quick move and sews on these guys and make to where they're all seamless, all connected so that one texture runs into the next. I'll just do the same thing on this as well. I'm just hitting G to repeat last command. And that's just snapping them all in there. Okay, that looks good. Pretty good. All right. Now let's just make sure that they're running in the right direction. So we can bring it over here. Take a look. Okay, see they're not facing the right direction, it looks like. So this probably has to run in that direction. That's better. Let's give it a little bit more texture density though. So I'll grab all these and both these guys here. I'm gonna scale both of them at the same time so they have the same texture density. And then I'll just grab this guy over here and bring it on up. Let's see what that looks like. That was pretty good. Okay, let's keep on going. I'll grab these two right here. These ones need to come up here. I'm gonna guarantee they're also gonna have to be rotated the same way as the other ones. So let's grab those two, put them like so. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, pretty good. Um, these end bits here, I might just make these ones metal. Um, Let's go with metal this time. I've done this less than a number of times, so I'm just going to switch it up a little bit. And we have one bit here that's going to be, there we go, the ring. And we'll just take that bit, bring it down here. We'll scale it up so it has as much texture as it can get. And let's see how that looks. Pretty good. Mine's the little dot on the top. I guess let's just figure out where that little dot is. There we go. And that's closed in. Okay, moving along. Let's go ahead and we'll go to UV shell mode. Let's go ahead and grab the other ones as well. Do those all at the same time. Okay. We'll just do the same thing, just stitching them all together. Okay, and then one last one that will give us the, the ring at the bottom. The control U, that will unfold it. And then I'll just move this all back in here as well. That looks pretty good. Let's keep going. Go to UV shell mode. Let's go ahead and we're going to take these. 
grow selection. So that way I can get the inside ring as well. Again, inverse deflection. And now I got just these guys. These are both rings. We get them both done at the same time. We're just going to take them, put them right there. Easy peasy. Actually, before I do that, let's just scale them up a little bit. Give them a little more texture. Make sure they look good. As good as I can. And that's looking good. I want this inside bits to be the same kind of wood as this though. So let's go ahead and we'll go UV shell. We'll select all of this. And then we'll deselect everything over here that's already been textured. So I'll just leave behind this section here that's the thinner bits. And we'll just move those over here. Okay, there we go. That looks good, right? Now we just need the main knuckles on the sides here. So these guys are all metal. So we can just go ahead and uh, move them all down kind of in the same general area. And I don't know if having them stitched together is really going to help at all. So I'm going to stack them, scale them up a little bit so they have some more texture space. And then just kind of put them all in the same general area. That all looks pretty good. Like that. One. There we go. Okay. Yep. That looks really good. I like the way that looks. Okay. Let's uh, close down our UV texture editor for now. We're gonna take this guy, and we'll move it down. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the history here. All right, so there we go. We got our winch completed. We have our catapult arm done. We just have to, well, actually, I almost uh, froze the transforms. I don't want the transforms frozen yet. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to finish up the catapult. There was one bit that we haven't done quite yet. Um, but it's going to take a little bit more than just a couple of minutes at the end of this lesson to get it done. We're going to need to make the netting for this. Um, so in the next lesson, um, we're going to create the netting. and uh, we'll create some uh, supports at the bottom here and a cross brace to support the cattle arm. And that will wrap up the modeling portion of this. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.